Hi guys. Now by now you should know how I work. So I I'm always walking in the spirit. Like I said to the Lord when I first started having dreams, I said, Oh you know how you're supposed to put things on the shelf, pray over them and you fret and you wonder, is it God or is it not God? Well, I sought the Lord on it and he said everything. Basically all your dreams are from God. He said to me, everything, it's almost like everything from this moment on is from God. And, you know, I scribed and I wrote and I've grown in confidence because what I've scribed has always come back, come, it's come back, not to haunt me, probably is haunting you because it's documented. It's in my red box. In 2018, the Lord said to me, it's not a movement, and I knew what he was talking about. He was talking about the church. Uh, the false church talks about revival and a movement. You know, the arenas and the seven mountains. He said, it's not a movement, and I knew what he was talking about. He said, it's a moment. It's a moment. So I have scribe words called, it's a moment. I might try and find it and link it, but I promise that often and i'm sorry if i disappoint you and i and but always look at my description because often i actually put words that the lord has given me in the description for instance the upload before this when i was choosing the thumbnail the lord spoke to me again about the dream now when i saw trump at the bus stop and then I saw the, the, the storm. You know, he said about the, the calm before the storm. When I saw the storm, the storm and the wind blow him off his feet and out of the picture, he was waiting at a bus stop. Right? So... I put it in the description because the Lord said to me, and it's like, why didn't I see this before? He opens our eyes, and I need to be faithful to tell you. So Trump, it was it's always prophetic. Trump is at the bus stop now. That's where we're at. Right now he's at the bus stop waiting. Think about what is he waiting for? He's waiting to find out what is going to happen judicially with the elections. He's in limbo, waiting. Is he going to get on the bus? Who's on the bus? A Democrat who's got a new friend. Hillary's not on the bus, she's already gone. Now she's got a new friend, Biden. That's the Democrats' new friend. Joyful. See his face? Does that look joyful? Let's tickle his chin. It's joyful. He's got the word. He's got the word and now he's showing his joyful face. It's taken a while. Have you noticed it's taken a while? When he first accepted that he was the president, he wasn't joyful, but he is now. He is now. So the Lord's word always comes to pass. Trump is at the bus stop waiting. He doesn't get on the bus. When the bus stops, the Democrat, Jenny, whom I've described, had an old friend called Hillary. Now her friend is this old man called Biden, who's called Joyful. He's a wonderful, joyful man, she said. When she leaves the bus... Trump doesn't get on the bus. He's the man that's dead at the bus stop, just like I saw. He gets blown out of the picture. Now, I know I use the word dead. The Lord hasn't given me the word dead. He gave me a picture of him being blown out of the picture, off his feet, the calm before the storm. He showed me the storm that took him out. He knows. He knows. And that's what he was telling us. Well, the Lord knows too. Just in time. 
just like the cold storage, the just in time. I've got an operations management degree. I understand about what's going to happen with the vaccines that we're getting in New Zealand. They need to be distributed as logistics, basically, throughout New Zealand in cold storage. Just think of ice cream. They can do it for ice cream. They can do it for frozen goods. They can do it. Don't think it's a barrier. It's all just bullshit. It's going to come and it's only we're thinking, oh, this is going to hold things up. It's bullshit. It's going to come. And if it's cold storage in America, it will come as well. It's like war. In the days of war, they come and they think of the Civil War. They take what's yours. They just confiscate it. They will get the trucks, the refrigeration trucks, for these vaccines. Watch out for your National Guard or your Home Guard or whatever they're called. That's the thing you need to worry about. Don't, yes, listen to what I'm saying about Obama. Listen to what the other true prophets are saying. But, and also, look, look with your own eyes. It's basically, it's, the thing is, I just witnessed to the gold miner down there, right? And this is what I heard myself saying, and I'll repeat it to you. I said it doesn't matter when you start the race. At this stage, I'm in the race because I'm walking by faith. I can't see yet in the natural what the Lord is showing me. Understand? And it's scriptural. In the scripture, it says you can't please God without faith. So if you hold out and wait for this to happen, which is basically his attitude, we'll wait and see, he's not going to be able to please God. He's not acceptable in, before God in God's sight. He will not. He will not see help. He, he will not find help in this time. I didn't tell him that, but what I just felt to tell him was this. That... <coughs> Well, basically, this is a message for all of you who don't walk by faith, which is what my testimony is supposed to be, an illustration of walking by faith, because everything is coming to pass, and so will this. I'm walking in faith and pleasing God. I'm running the race. I've started the race. Now, say, for example, my gold miner down there, he hasn't started the race yet. Let's just say when something comes to pass, or when 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 people are neck neck deep and shit, and they cry out to God. You know they see it happening, right? When you once you see it happening, you're not in faith, because faith is the substance of the things unseen. Does that make sense? So you need to believe. Before you see. Jesus said blessed are those who believe. Who do not see. Walking by faith. So once you start to walk by faith. And actually believe. Without seeing. And let's just say that gold miner. Starts to see some things in the natural. And then he starts to believe. Something. That God has shown him will happen. Because as soon as you get saved. The Lord God in this environment is going to start showing you the future. I'm telling you now, he is the God of the past, present, future. There is no way he will leave you without knowing what's coming. That is the nature of God. He's done it right through scripture. He's always warned us. He's warning you now. When you get saved, you will get your own personal warning. If you're not getting a personal warning now, you're probably not saved. When you get that warning, you walk in faith, even though you can't see it. If the Lord says, go here, go there, sell this, do this, prepare this way, go speak to that person, do exactly as he says, then you are walking by faith. So in the future, there are people who will move 
to the beginning, the start line. It's not who starts the race, guys. I'm nowhere, I'm nothing different from anyone else. And there's people who have been on this treadmill a lot longer than me. They've been waiting a whole generation for this. It's not when you start the race. It's that the the thing is that the thing is you need to start the race, run the good race of faith. And the important thing, the most important thing is to finish the race. Whether that be you die, whether that be you get raptured, either way, whether you live or die in the body, you have eternal life. If you are found by God to have faith, Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Are you starting to understand what faith is? Please, please God. They had it easy, the disciples. That's what Jesus was saying. They get to walk around with him. They saw him do miracles. All the followers did. And most of them abandoned him at the cross. And they saw him. We need, that's why this is a blessed generation. And it's also cursed, like Jesus said. They kept saying to him, badgering him. They said, what are the signs of the end? What are the signs of the end? This is why you're not seeing the miracles yet. Because the Lord said that, what did he say? He said, um, you were a, 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 was it a, a, selfish, a selfish generation? Always seeking after a sign. I tell you, there will be no sign except the sign of Noah. And the Lord has shown me clearly, clear, a sign for me is the sign of Noah, which is the water. The water is what I see. I know Clex sees before the fire. I see the water, and that may be after that. And that is get in the ark, and that is going to be either a, some type of rapture event, but I know that the final rapture event is when the two witnesses, the two groups of witnesses are resurrected in the streets after being left abandoned, dead, lying there. Three days they are resurrected in the streets and then we all go home. We all go home. No one's left behind. I was supposed to bring this word later, but no one is left behind. That is a lie. So when we all go home, every believer goes home. But the actual resurrection of the two witnesses is what brings more believers in to the kingdom. But they don't go. They stay. So they weren't believers at, when Jesus came. But the act of t the light leaving the earth, whatever happens... Whatever they see, because everyone sees it, some believe. Now, they're the ones that get the martyr's crown. I'm not saying that that people will not become martyrs before that. But every single one of them, absolutely every one of them, dies for Christ. And they pay the ultimate sacrifice. And that's their call and destiny. That's when they started the race. So you start the race. What's important is that you finish well. Finishing well is not renouncing your faith in Jesus and not bowing down to Satan and worshipping the beast and his image. All right? No one's better than anyone else. As long as once you start the race, you're walking in faith. Just make sure that when the Lord comes, that he finds faith on the earth and you're one of them. Okay? Right. Anyway. I just wanted to show you this. It says joyful face. I started with saying every word that the Lord is saying is coming to pass. He got me to scribe a word. It is not a movement. And I told you that's the false church. It's a moment. I've already uploaded time and time again. I've been hearing not only do I hear now is a time which is the back to front to the, uh, the time is now. But I hear them say, it's a moment. And Obama said, it's a moment. And I've uploaded it. That's this year. And Trump, um, and he also said, when he entered the election, I oh, know, oh, he's not running. 
Oh, don't be stupid. We know he's running. We know he's running. He's placed this li that little Indian boy. Already he's got him on his team. He's running. He's picking the team. Biden's not picking the team. Biden's not capable. You know it. Even the Democrats know it. And his vice president, Kamala, is not capable either. She's not experienced. She can't do the job. Obama will get the job. He is the Antichrist. And he will abandon America while it burns. I'm sorry, he will. There's one um, prophetic word that I've always remembered. It was a dream that somebody had. And the Obama was the Antichrist. But they, the, what impacted them and what impacted me, I've never forgotten, is how when America was burning, she had a picture of Obama on an aeroplane with a stupid smirk on his face while he watched his nation. Because he is, he, he's committing treason. And he watched his nation, nation burn. He threw the nation under the bus. It's not his nation. He's not from here. He's not, he, he, people know who he is. You can find out who he is, but it doesn't matter. God's told me who he is. He's the beast. The one that was, then was not, but then is. It's the beast. Riding on Babylon. Or Babylon's riding on him. Um, and it's a moment, just like he said. Now, I'm not going to pray. Oh, yeah, let's just play it and that will save you. Save you. I'll link it, but will save you looking at the link. I'm going to play it, but you're looking for the word. It's a moment. Now, I haven't even watched the whole thing, so there might be something else in this. Joe Biden's plan to please socialist lawmakers is now wide in the open. It's all clear now. Before I get into that, if you're new here, go ahead and hit the red button down below to subscribe. And just hit look the at his face. Bell so you are the first to know. Then the latest news breaks. John Hansen from the Political Insider reports that on Sunday, Joe Biden's spokesperson, Kate Bedingfield, said that the far-left Democrat Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won't be disappointed with what Joe Biden has in store should he win the election. Quote, some people hear the word consensus on the left and they think it means you're going to sell the left out. That's what NBC News host Chuck Todd said during the interview with Bedingfield. And that's when she assured the host... Biden would satisfy the extreme left of his party. Watch. Doesn't, <laughs> some, doesn't he look joyful? People hear the word consensus on the left and they think it means you're going to sell the left out. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said this in an interview about her expectations on how the Biden administration will be to the, to the left of the party. And she says the history of the party tends to be that we get really excited about the grassroots to get elected. And then those communities are promptly abandoned right after an election. Um, let me ask you this. Do you believe that she's going to be disappointed uh, or not when she sees the agenda of the Biden administration in the first six months? No, I think I think that Vice President Biden campaigned on an incredibly progressive and aggressive agenda. Take a look, for example, at his climate plan. It's the boldest, biggest uh, climate plan that's ever been put forward by, uh, you know, by a nominee running for president and, and now a president elect. He's going to make good on those commitments. I mean, we, you know, he spent time during this campaign bringing people together around uh, around this climate plan. He was able to get uh, the endorsement of groups like the Sunrise Movement and the endorsement of labor for this plan. It's a big, aggressive plan. It's the perfect example of the kind of, um, uh, you know, big effort that he is going to make to meet this moment and to meet these crises. That we're in. Did you hear it? At the end, she said it's a perfect example of the kind of, you know, big effort that he's going to make to meet this moment and meet these crises that we're in. So Did how did former it? President Barack Obama, Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel, put it? You never let a serious crisis go to waste, right? How many crises would a President Biden manage to find? How many would he use as an excuse to implement social... ...make to meet this moment and meet these crises that we're in? Big aggressive plan is the perfect example of the kind of... Um, uh, you know, big effort that he is going to make to meet this moment and to meet these crises that we're in. <laughs> 
at the end she said it's a perfect example of the kind of you know big effort that he's going to make to meet this moment and now notice the next thing he says is obama and this is the next network meet these crises that we're in so how did former president barack obama chief of staff rahm emanuel put it <laughs> he never let a serious crisis go to waste right how many crises would a President Biden manage to find? How many would he use as an excuse to implement socialism and anything else AOC and her friends might desire? They write that Biden's vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris was ranked by GovTrack as the most liberal compared to all senators. And keep in mind that most liberal in the congressional body that includes self-described socialist Bernie Sanders among its members. Comment below. We'll see you at the next report for the next news network. I'm Gary Franchi.